Now perhaps one of the most common uses of using an alpha mask is that of masking really complex images such as hair. Such as this image here, where we've got a lot of hair off to the side here where you can see the background through it. Now of course this is against a white background, and this is going to be much easier to mask out than it would on a more complex background, but for the sake of demonstration you can kind of get a really good idea by starting simple and building from there. So. Using traditional selection tools on this particular subject would be next to impossible. In fact, it really is impossible. You can't really use the marching ant selections to really fine-tune the selection. This, in this case, it has to be done through an alpha channel. So I'm going to go into the channels palette, and what we want to look for is the channel that has the most contrast to the background. And that's simply just toggling each and selecting each channel to see which one is going to have the most. Red seems to be, they all look pretty good, but it seems that blue is going to be our best one. Now, of course, as I said before, the subject is against a white background, so it's a little easier to determine it, but you can get the idea of how we're working here. So I'm going to duplicate that blue channel, and I'm going to go ahead and paint the subject as it is black. Now, we all know that alpha channels use white as an active selection and black as the unselected area. Well, obviously I'm going to have to invert the values of this, but I'm going to go ahead and paint in the black area just to fill in the selection. Actually, I'm going to bring up levels first. I'm going to take the black slider and push it in to remove as much detail in the subject that I can without losing too much over here. I've gotten rid of a lot of that detail inside here, but her face isn't quite there. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And I'm going to go ahead and use the paintbrush to manually remove that area. So painting with black, I'm just going to paint inside here. Got it set on overlay. Let's go ahead and put it on normal. And we'll just go in here and paint these areas out. Painting in with black. So now I just need to invert the values of this mask simply by pressing Command or Control I. So there's my new mask. So I've done that basically evaluating the image channels, looking for the one with the most contrast, and now I can visually see how this selection is going to work. I've got a lot of intricate uh, selecting going on around here. And the beauty of this being an alpha channel is that I can go in here and detail it, fine tune it as much as I need to. In fact, this one doesn't look like it needs much work to it, but I'll go ahead and paint. I can paint some detail out here and do some very intricate work here. And the beauty is this is an alpha channel. This isn't going anywhere. It's not like it's a quick mask where it's going to turn into a selection and be gone. It is always going to be there. So once I've done that, simply load that channel as a selection. Go back to my composite channel, back to my layers, and I'm just going to press Command-J and copy that to its own layer. So I'm going to turn this off. You can see we've gotten a pretty clean mask here. A lot of that hair has been masked out, and it looks pretty good. So let's drop a background here. I'm going to command click on the new layer icon it'll drop in a new layer beneath my active layer and let's go and get a color and drop it in here I'm just gonna fill that layer in there now what you see is some ghosting that's going on in her hair that's right in here and that's because we lifted it from a white background there's gonna be a slight bit of anti-aliasing regardless of how intricate your mask is but there are functions to deal with this so selecting that layer First thing you might want to do is go under the layer menu, and it goes off screen, but you can't see it. It's a, this is a long menu, so. But right down here at the very bottom, it says matting, and we're, here we have we can either select defringe, remove black mat, or re remove white mat. So I'm going to go and se select remove white mat. You can see what happens. Great deal of that ghosting. If I command, z or if I can command or control Z on this back and forth, you can see that what it's done. It's revealed a uh, great deal of that white ghosting. Not all of it, but most of it. I could simply apply it again and it will give me more of that effect in there. But it's still got a little bit of light areas in here. Now, to fix that, all we need to do is go over here and get not that one. Go and get our dodge and burn tools. I'm going to get my burn tool here. And I'm going to leave it on midtones and go ahead and leave this at about 60%. I'm going to make a brush a little bit smaller. Now I'm just going to brush inside that area and darken those highlighted areas. So it tends to blend in with that background. Because we've got this against a darker background, we're not going to see much highlight glistening through that hair. So it's going to be a lot darker. But these, e these are easy things to work around, especially now that we've masked it out. We've gotten really intricate, intricate masking in here. 
Now you can see there's some white areas in here, and if I needed to, I could simply go in here and fine-tune that selection a little bit more and reapply it. But that's one of the very popular uses of generating an alpha mask, is some really complex selections. Now here's one more thing I want to talk to you about as far as masking. Still got my channels in there. Now, what if you want to select generate a selection from multiple alpha masks or alpha channels? Well, let's say I want to select this stop sign and the pole, and I want to extract it from the background. Well, I could probably intricately go ahead with the polygon tool and select it and everything like that, but I'm going to go ahead and do it through channels. And I'm going to go in here and toggle through and see that the red channel is going to look pretty good for selecting the sign. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate that. And I'm going to go ahead and get my lasso tool here. And I'm just going to draw a loose selection right around that stop sign. So there I have a loose selection. Now I want to invert the selection so I, se so I can select the background area, not the select area inside here, but the outside area. So let's just press Shift-Command-I, and that will invert the selection. So I'm going to fill that selected area with black. So black is set as my background color, so I'm just going to press Command-Delete, Control-Backspace on my keyboard, then deselect. Now, that stop sign is pretty much all white, so it's almost a complete 100% selection, but it's not quite yet. i got to fine-tune it a little bit more. So I'm going to take my paintbrush tool, and first I'm going to start painting with black, and I'm going to set my blending mode of this brush to overlay. Increase that brush size a little bit, and I'm going to click in this background area. Now, because I'm in overlay mode, even if I over go over spray into the white, it's not affecting it. Because it's white, it's going to leave it alone. And we'll just get that little part of the pole right there. Now, I'm going to hit my X key to flip the uh, black and white foreground colors. Now I'm going to paint in the white area of the sign just to make that all white so I know that it selects every bit of that sign. Just like that. Well, now I need the pole. Well, no channel really lends itself to selecting the pole by creating a mask via a, a, a one of these channels. So I'm just going to select it by using the lasso tool. I'm going to hold down the option key to just kind of draw a selection around the pole itself. Now, I may be a little off on that selection, so I'm going to go ahead and use the refine edge feature here. And I've got it set to where black is masking it out and revealing the object. And it's sticky from the last setting I had, but I've, I needed to choke this in a little bit. Just to, There's a little bit of sky right there. If I choke this in a little bit more, it'll hide that quite a bit. Okay, so there's that. So now I'm just going to save the selection. I'm going to the Select menu and Save Selection. That will save it as a new channel. Now, there's the sign itself, and there's the pole. Now, the problem is they're on different alpha channels. So if I want to generate one whole selection out of these two, how do I do that? Well, as usual, I just command click on one alpha channel to load it as a selection. Then go to the other alpha channel you want to load as a selection, hold down the command key, and, this, and also hold down the shift key. And what you'll see is that little selection icon by the hand. Inside of it, when you press the shift key, you'll see a little plus sign. And that's asking you if you want to add to the selection. So if you click on that, it will add that pole, that alpha channel to this active selection. So if I go back to my composite, go back to my layers, there it is selected the entire pole. If I press Command J, copies it to its own layer, there's the whole sign. Now obviously this was a pretty simple shape object, but you get an idea of how you can generate multiple alpha channels of the same object depending on the contrast that falls upon them, and then load each channel as a selection adding to it, and then you'll eventually get your entire selection. So the other way of adding to that selection, if you're in the composite, in your layers, go under Select, Load Selection. And here you can select whichever channel you want to load first, and this is a new, new selection. So there's that initial selection of the sign. If you go to Load Selection again, and select that other channel, and here you want to go Add to Selection. This is basically the same thing as holding down that command and the Shift key. So it'll add to the current selection. Hit OK, and there it has added that alpha channel to that active, currently active selection. So you can see how generating masks across multiple alpha channels can be combined to create one selection. So you really have a great deal of control 
managing these selections visually inside alpha channels. So now, next lesson, we're going to talk about layer masks. And this is, as I said before, this is the most common way of using masks inside Photoshop, is using layer masks. So we'll see you in that lesson.